Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and this is AP Physics Essentials video 93. It's on the conservation of linear momentum. Remember, momentum is a sum of the mass of an object times the velocity of the object. The bigger it is or the faster it's going, the more momentum that it has. And I'm going to give the blue sphere on the left a little bit of momentum by removing the platform, and it bounces off the other sphere, and then it comes back again. And so is linear momentum conserved? Yes, it's always conserved in every collision. I have momentum on the left side, I'm transferring that to the right side, and then it's simply coming back again. And this only works if they both have the same exact mass. But what would happen if I made it out of a different material? Let's say I made it out of clay. Watch what happens here. Instead of just bouncing off, they come connected to each other. And so what's really lost, we're losing some of that speed. We still conserve our linear momentum, but we lost some of that kinetic energy. And if we lose kinetic energy, we call that an inelastic rather than an elastic collision. And so conservation of momentum, remember, is always maintained in any collision. So if I have two objects running into each other, the momentum that we have before the collision equals the momentum that we have after. So let me set up a little elastic collision like that. We're transferring momentum, in this case, from one object to another. We would call this an elastic elastic collision. Why is that? Not only have we maintained the linear momentum, but we've also maintained our kinetic energy. We haven't lost any of that speed. In other words, the kinetic energy that came into the collision equaled the kinetic energy that came out. Now we could also have another type of collision called an inelastic collision. And that's when one object hits another object and they lose some of that kinetic energy. Maybe they become connected or it could just run into a wall where they both eventually come to a complete stop. We would then call that an inelastic collision. Did we maintain conservation of linear momentum? For sure, we always do in every collision. Did we maintain kinetic energy? No, we've lost some of that speed. Did we maintain energy? Is there a conservation of energy? We did. Where did that energy go? It went to the internal energy inside the objects involved in that collision. And so an example of this, if I drop a basketball with an apple on the top of it, we're converting some of that momentum from the basketball, which is bigger, to the apple. We're increasing its speed. Now the best way to verify this is through experimentation. So we're using a sim bucket simulation. We've got these carts that are going to collide with one another and it'll show us what their velocity is after the collision. And so what we'll do is figure out does the linear momentum maintain and then does kinetic energy maintain to figure out if it's elastic or inelastic. And so linear momentum, remember, P1 plus P2 equals P1 prime plus P2 prime. In other words, the momentum of those two objects before has to equal the momentum after. And so let me give this collision. You could see in the simulation that both of them have a one kilogram mass to begin with. Initial velocities were five meters per second on the left, negative five meters per second on the right. And you can see that those speeds are reversed after the collision. And so if we set up our equation, M1V1 plus M2V2 equals M1V1 prime, that's after the collision, plus M2V2 prime. So I can just plug in my values. And what I find is that the momentum before and after, again, of the system, not of individual objects, but of the system itself, uh, the momentum was zero before and zero after. Linear momentum is maintained. Now, is kinetic energy maintained in this collision? The kinetic energy before and after is going to be equal? Well, if we do that collision, looks like the speeds aren't changing very much. And so I then have to get to the math. And so I'm going to plug in kinetic energy. This looks scary, but again, it's one half mv squared plus one half mv squared of the objects before the collision and then after the collision. So if I plug in those values, what I find is that we had 25 joules of kinetic energy before and 25 joules after. And so is this an elastic or an inelastic collision? It's elastic, we haven't lost any of that kinetic energy. Let's try another one. Now the one on the left has 10 meters per second, so it's got a greater speed than the one on the right. They both are one kilogram masses. You could guess as far as what's gonna happen when they collide with each other. You can see the speeds are going to be swapped. And so if I were then to plug that into my linear momentum equation, I would find that the momentum we had before is equal to the momentum that we had after. Now it's not zero anymore. What is it? It's a positive value. That indicates that we have a shift. In other words, there's momentum 
the overall momentum is to the right in this system. Now, is kinetic energy maintained? Again, we use that formula, kinetic energy before, kinetic energy after. If I plug those values in, what I find is that we have 62.5 joules before, 62.5 joules after. Now we have more kinetic energy because one of those cars is going faster, but is it an elastic collision? For sure, because we've maintained kinetic energy. Now let's go to a different kind of a collision instead of bouncing off of each other, they're becoming connected. And so you know right away, this is probably gonna be an inelastic collision. If I plug in my linear momentum values, I find that the momentum we had before, 20, equals the momentum we have after. Again, it's always going to be maintained. But then if we look at the kinetic energy before and after, and we figure out our values, you can see that we have less kinetic energy after. If I plug in those values, 200 joules before, 50 joules after. And so we've lost 150 joules of energy. What does that indicate? This is an inelastic collision. In other words, we've lost some of that kinetic energy. But you might be thinking to yourself, where did it go? Well, think about a car accident. When two cars run into each other, they had kinetic energy before. Where did it go? It became the internal energy after that collision. And we can even have a super elastic collision. So if we've got an explosive device in the middle, it's all internal energy. So what's the momentum at this point? There's no momentum, there's no movement. But if I were to let that explosive go, what's gonna happen? We're gonna convert all of that internal energy to kinetic energy in an explosion like that. So did you learn to make qualitative predictions about momentum and how it's transferred? Could you apply the principle of conservation of momentum? Remember P1 plus P2 equals P1 prime plus P2 prime. Did you then figure out how to design an experiment? So using carts and colliding them is the best way to do this. And then finally, did you figure out how do you classify this as elastic or inelastic? Remember in any collision, conservation of linear momentum is going to be maintained, but only in an elastic collision are we also gonna have the conservation of kinetic energy. So I hope that made sense and I hope that was helpful.